Hey, this is Greg Dooley back with another edition of the History Show. And I've got a cool one for you today because it's about the Michigan Union. Um, and it's timely because for the last almost two years, the union has been going through a nearly $90 million renovation. And one of the cool things is not, they're not only uh, changing and upgrading it, they're restoring some of it back to its original design. And I can't wait to check it out. And if I get the chance, uh, hopefully I'll post some pictures or maybe video up here and show that. But the union itself, its history is very interesting, but what I want to talk about are some of the ties to athletics, because that's what we do here, right? So a couple of things are going to surprise you. First, is the, it is right down to the beginning in 1904 is when the first group got together and talked about this concept of a union. Well, they formed a small committee of students, and one of the students that was on this committee was a guy named Thomas Roberts. And you may know him for readers of my site or people who know their Little Brown Jug history as Tommy. And Tommy Roberts was the student manager who in 1903 in Minneapolis, before the game, bought a five gallon water jug to use for the game. Why he did it, why he left it, and why they play for it are all things that I've discussed that have been, I think, uh, misunderstood over the years that I think I helped clarify a lot of that but Tommy Roberts bought the Little Brown Jug and he was also one of the founders that that initial group uh, who helped found the union which I think is really cool uh, one of the early things they did was buy a house a, a place to meet and that that house in 1907 was a uh, was a uh, uh, owned by a, a judge Cooley but it was really in the in the same general area where the union is today but they quickly outgrew it and bought some more property and they hired some architects and the firm they hired is a firm called pond and pond and one of the the one of those ponds is a guy named irving pond who famously scored the first touchdown in michigan history all right back in 1879 so he was obviously a little older now uh, but against Racine's College, he is credited with that first score, uh, and uh, he will go down in history. They didn't actually complete the union until years later. I believe it was 1919 that the union, as we basically know it today, uh, was completed. It had bowling alleys, it had a barber shop, um, it added a pool in 1925. So uh, other than cafes and meeting areas and all that, it was a pretty happening spot in 1919. Um, so one of the things that Pond and the architects did was they added or included rather uh, a couple statues. And on one side, and this is this is on the State Street entrance. On one side is the statue above the above the main entrance there is a statue of, of what we call the, the athlete. And the athlete looks down toward the athletic campus. On the other side was the scholar, and the scholar looks down toward Angel Hall um, and uh, toward, toward main campus, toward central campus, which is a really cool feature. Uh, so what else? I can't talk about the union without talking about the union button. And the union button were for, for decades this really small, really small, and I'll show some pictures here, button that, that uh, members of the union originally would wear on their lapel pin to signify that they paid their union dues. But the history of these pins goes way back further, and I'll show some of them on the screen here. It actually goes back to a group called the Athletic Association. The Athletic Association was formed in the, eight, I think around 1890, um, in its current form, but it was really a group of, of students who played sports. I believe it was tennis, I wanna say track and football got together because they had common interests. And what they decided to do, and I'm not exactly sure when the tradition started, I believe there's a pin that dates back to about 1895. There may be earlier ones, um, something I'm still working on. But uh, they started this tradition of creating this pin and really what it was, was a fundraiser. You bought one of these pins, it showed you supported athletics, um, and you know half the money, whatever, went to support the various expenses of these athletic programs. And that continued 
up through Yost's arrival, and the pins got a little more elaborate. Uh, some of them like the shape of football, uh, some of them with like a, a glove, balls, a track shoe, cleat is one of my favorites. Um, and they evolved until the Union got a little more popular and there was a decision to use this tradition of these pins. And by the way, they had the year, uh, uh, the school year indicated on them. And that meaning changed over the years. Um, but in 19, it was about 1912 that the Union said, we're going to continue this tradition of issuing these pins. And, and again, the beginning, it was you paid your union due, so you got your pin. Eventually, incoming freshmen got, got a pin as part of their tuition. But it was a, it's a very cool tradition that continued over the years into the 20s and 30s. Um, and as far as I know, the last pin with a year on it was around 1943. Um, and that's really something that's really cool, that I think is really cool and very collectible. You see these come up on eBay. Um, and the ones from, you know, I, I've never seen one from the 1890s, um, but ones from, say, that point a minute era, 1901, 1902, 1903, I've seen those come up on occasion, and they can go for hundreds of dollars, $100, $200. Um, they're very, very collectible. The early ones actually had a gold backing, uh, so uh, interesting stuff. But either way, I'm really excited about the opening of the union. If I have more on that, um, I'll share it here. If you've got stories or personal stories from the union or some union history that you want to share, leave that in the comments. And I hope you enjoy this episode, and we'll talk to you soon.